Howdy fishing fam, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be finishing up this install on my Humminbird Solix up here at the bow of my boat. We are installing this Solix at the bow. Uh, we'll have a trolling motor transducer and we will be networking it as well. So if you're interested in what all that means, well, we will get into that a little later in the video. But as you can tell, I kind of tore the front of my boat apart already. Uh, that part's gonna be more particular to your boat. And if you're installing a Solex, it may not be exactly the same. So I kind of took everything apart. Uh, so the install would be a little more streamlined. Uh, removed the old fish finder. I had a Humminbird Helix up here. And uh, now we're ready to start putting things on and back together. But first, I'm going to start off by quickly kind of connecting everything, getting the, getting the unit powered up and making sure everything works as it should. And if that does works out and checks out pretty well, then we'll finish the install by putting the, the final touches on things by putting the transducer in the correct spot, making sure my cables are properly routed and all that stuff and uh, heat shrinked and all that good stuff. So, all right, well, let's uh, hop on in the boat and get started. So the first thing we're gonna mess with is the power cable. Uh, we have a red and a black, you know, hot and then a neutral. Uh, I've already pulled the fuse on the circuit that I know I'm gonna be working on. And I've also disconnected all the power to the, the rest of the boat. So double, kind of double protected on the circuit that I'm working on and then everything else is powered down as well. So don't have to worry about shorting anything out and popping any fuses. Um, all we gotta do now is make sure we connect the correct wire to the correct wire. So we already have our heat shrink slid onto here on our wires here. Uh, only thing I gotta do now is make the connections to the correct wires. And on my boat, this bow graph has a black wire and then this purple with a pink stripe in it. The purple with the pink stripe is gonna be the hot on this one and the black is gonna be the neutral. So now I just need to strip these on or strip them off, which I'll do that real quick. Shouldn't take too much time here. And what I'm gonna do is a pretty simple twist method. This area is not gonna get a lot of stress or forces on it. So I'm just gonna twist my wires together. And then I'm gonna bend them back here. Cover it up with the heat shrink. I'm on now, slide on up there. All right, so we got this one is ready to be uh, heated up with my heat gun. I'm gonna do the other one first before I uh, get too wild and crazy here. That way I can heat shrink them both at the same time. We're just gonna twist it together. Now there's uh, probably better methods of doing this. Uh, this is gonna be a pretty watertight method using the heat shrink on here. So I'm not too concerned about the wires coming undone or anything like that. Now I'm gonna plug in my heat gun. I'm gonna go ahead and get it plugged in real quick. Now you wanna be careful where you're applying your heat. You don't wanna melt things you don't need to be melting or heating up. So we're gonna heat it up in the air, make sure it gets nice and hot. That way I just have to hit it shortly with a full amount of heat. All right, so that should be good enough. Get it to where I'm aiming away from things. And there we go. I turned it off. Now don't set this down. If you have one of these, don't set it down on your carpet. It'll melt your carpet. I'm gonna lower this down to the ground. And for this install, that's going to be my only wire to wire install that I have to do. And look at these wires. They look pretty good. They're not gonna come undone. This heat shrink is really strong on here, so. I love using heat shrink instead of electrical tape for these connections. It just does such a better job of holding things together. So electrical connection made and here's our electrical fitting. Uh, normally I just go ahead and stick it through here. We're not going to do that right now. What we're going to do next is make all of our connections. Uh, let's see, where's the other one here? So my other graph was already networked. So all I gotta do is connect this guy, uh, which is connected to my network system. 
And then I'll also connect up my transducer and then I'll power it on for you guys so we can get the first power up. Okay, so I still have everything powered down so I don't have to worry about any of that stuff having any power on it still. So we're gonna connect first our power cable, the furthest one on the left. It's a simple, you slide it in the notch here and then screw it down nice and tight. Next, we're gonna connect our ethernet network. Uh, same situation, a notch, and then it screws on down. Make sure this part works. And then lastly, we have our transducer. I'm gonna just put it over here to the side. I hadn't even wrapped the cable yet. We're gonna connect it up. Same thing, a simple notch slides in and then screw it on down. Now I'm gonna go reconnect my fuse, turn the power back on, and then we can uh, power this guy up, check the functionalities real quick, make sure everything works before we you know, go through all the time to install all the wires and stuff. And then, well, if it works as planned, then we'll start doing the final routing of some wires, starting with the transducer. Um, and that'll be pretty easy. I'll show you guys that. Okay, uh, everything should have power. We're gonna press the power button. Got some lights here on the side. Hummingbird symbol. Dang, we're doing good so far. These things usually take a little bit to boot up. I think I'm gonna turn the back graph on at the same time. Uh, make sure the connectivity between the Solux has worked pretty well. I'll also turn on my trolling motor just so we have it as well. I won't turn my trolling motor on because it is disconnected at the moment. Uh, big old white screen. We're gonna start it in normal mode. First time set up. Let me turn on my back graph. It'll take, it'll take forever to load up. Okay, so when I powered it up, it asked me if I wanted to sync my control heads together, but it said make sure before you do that that the software versions are the same and they're both at 4.02 uh, from the 9 uh, September 13th of 2021. So uh, we're good there. Uh, so I'm gonna go back and power up the systems again, or at least this one. I think this one's gonna power up a little faster. Go ahead and power it up, and then uh, make sure the control heads sync together. Okay, so we're back powered up again. Multiple networks have been detected. The synchronized networks, all control heads must have the same software version installed. They do, I already verified that, so we don't have to do that. Please update all control heads at the same network version prior, prior to synchronizing network. Well, already done. So this unit is this one. This is the remote unit. I wanna sync probably to this one, I'm guessing. Okay, confirm. This one's configuring the network. I'm gonna go look and see what the other one says. It says the exact, it says the exact same thing. So we're synchronizing our networks. All right, so we should be able to look at things depending on which unit we're looking at. So site imaging, transducer it's using. I hear this one clicking, so I imagine it's probably using a local one. All right, everything seems to be working as it should. Time to power down the units again. Uh, I'll probably just pull the fuse and turn the power off again just to make sure I don't mess anything up up here. But other than that, it's time to, we're gonna go ahead and work on the transducer that goes on the trolling motor. And then we're going to route all the wires, make sure everything goes through here just fine. This little hole that I have in this plate here. And then uh, we should be good to go ready to start going fishing on this thing. Okay, so I'm working on getting this plate, the trolling motor plate on the transducer. By the way, this only goes on one way. Uh, I first put it on backwards, upside down here. And uh, yeah, that doesn't work out so good. So make sure you thread your cable on the correct way where the flat side touches the flat side of the transducer. 
Okay, so we have our transducer ready for install. I uh, gotta thread the cable through this little slot that they give us here. So I'll go ahead and thread that kind of through so it kind of stays in there. Okay, now it only goes on one direction and the direction is actually pretty easy to understand if you have an Ultrex. It has two little notches here to go around the US2 uh, transducer that's pre-installed on some of these. Uh, and it also has this little groove here uh, for the little skeg that the trolling motor has, so it fits there. So if you don't really know and you have an Ultrex, it makes it really easy. But if you're putting it on some other trolling motor, it's also really easy. Uh, the rounded edge goes toward the front of the boat, so the prop is always going to be facing the back, so you want this side facing the front. So pretty easy uh, install here. Now I made sure that I uh, put my hose clamps on here uh, where they'll be facing upward so I could use the screwdriver from the top. Hopefully I didn't overlook anything else, but now let's just go ahead and slide this sucker on real quick. Uh, let's see, the cable is gonna come out this side, so we're gonna wanna leave the cable over here. Uh, I only really have to open up one of the hose clamps. I only have to open up this one, the one uh, toward the back. The other one should be big enough to slide over, I think. Yeah, it is. So we'll use it to hold up everything for now. Go ahead and get this guy reestablished. All right, so everybody's kind of hanging loose here. Gonna put the cable back where it goes. Oh, yep, yeah, it doesn't completely slide over. Let's see if I can get it to lift up just a little bit to slide on in there. Now, I don't know, I hadn't really thought about much where I wanna put it as far as how far back and how far forward. I'm probably just gonna try to split the difference between the two. I think the forward position will help me keep it aligned a little better. So we're gonna put it as far forward as it can. It has these two little notches here that'll hopefully help me keep everything aligned. And now it's just time to tighten these things down, which I'm thinking about uh, getting my quarter inch ratchet out for this. I think I'm gonna go do that. I'll be right back. All right, we're back with our 5 16 ratchet. I'm gonna get these guys kind of close. Probably could use a, a drill or something to do this a little faster, but eh, I've got time. All right, now we got a good solid transducer on here. I'm gonna straighten up my hose clamps real quick and then we're gonna go through the cable alignment so y'all hold on tight. So the first thing about my cable routing that I do is I don't use zip ties. Zip ties tend to cut into your wires and eventually over time they will cut through your wires and then you'll have to buy new transducers. I use electrical tape. That's a much flatter surface, doesn't clamp down as hard. All you're looking to do is hold it in place and so what if you have to change out the electrical tape every year? I mean, a roll of electrical tape is a couple bucks. And if you have to do it every year, so be it. At least you don't have to buy another $400 transducer or like in the instance of LiveScope, you don't have to buy another $1,000 transducer. So that's why I use electrical tape. I cleaned out the shaft here with uh, some glass cleaner so it'll stick a little better. Uh, on this, uh, trolling motor, we have the Ultrex here. It has a little groove down the side uh, designed specifically for running your cables through. So we're gonna run this cable. We're gonna have one, our first piece of electrical tape is gonna go right down here. I'm trying to decide, I think I, think I want the, the cable to be further down so we're gonna go ahead and open up this electrical tape here. Um, it might be a little easier for you um, if you go ahead and lower your, your trolling motor a little bit, not all the way, just like this maybe, and it'll just hold there. Uh, just be careful while doing this. Uh, in case the trolling motor falls, you don't have your hand in this area where it'll you know, poke a hole in it. So let's not do that. 
Um, only You only need a few wraps. I'm going to do like uh, maybe four or five. And that's what I'm going to do first with uh, this guy. I'm going to I'll route my entire cable down through here. I'm only going to tape it in a couple spots because I have a live scope transducer I need to install on top of this. Uh, it just uh, goes on to the shaft here. Just make sure you don't... Uh, you, you have clearance around your guide here if you have an Ultrex or whatever you have. Uh, there's a shaft guide. Make sure you're not smashing up against it. If you need to put electrical tape on both sides to make sure the transducer wire stays really close to it, uh, go ahead and do that because you don't want to uh, mess up your nice new transducer cable by smashing it through the guide. Okay, so I had to open up my door so I can get my tongue out of the way. And right now I'm trying to determine the size of the loop I need right here so that the cable doesn't get into a bind. So uh, that's why I wanted to lower the trolling motor all the way down. That way I can uh, maneuver the head and kind of see what size of loop I need to put. So I'm going to start there. That's all the way around there. All the way around there, nothing's in a bind. The loop's not too big, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put the loop right there, just like that. And uh, this will work well with our live scope unit as well. So let me. Uh, so now we got our little loop here, ready to go. And uh, next we'll start with the, the live scope. We'll put it back on. I may not show that, not big deal. Just uh, duplicating what we already did. The only thing different there is uh, the cable is actually two pieces. So the rest of this video is gonna be me routing this cable underneath the bow and then getting it out this bow plate. Uh, probably pretty similar to everyone else's, uh, just routing the most of the cable underneath, storing it, uh, making sure none of the cables get in a bind or having kinks or pinches in them. Pretty boring if you ask me, so we're going to time lapse the rest of this. And then once I get it all installed and uh, we're looking at it at the, the final configuration, I'll come back and uh, say anything that I found along the way that y'all might need to watch for. Boom, that's gonna conclude our install. We got our Garmin down here, our GPS map 1222. We got our Humminbird Solix 12, communicating on our network with everything else that I have installed. It is actually a pretty easy install. So if you're actually intimidated by this a little bit, don't worry, it's actually pretty easy. None of this stuff is overly complex or difficult. Uh, luckily, most of the work has already, was already done for me as far as the routing of all the cables and stuff. Uh, I only had the, the transducer really to deal with, so it made this install rather easy. Let me know in the comments below if uh, you thought about buying a Solix, installing it yourself, and just questioned whether or not you could do it. I promise you, it's not that hard. Now this video is going to be a part of my Solix series. If you want to check out the unboxing, I will have that video here. Otherwise, I'll have the rest of that playlist up here as well. But until next time, see you later, fishing fam.